All right, today you're going to turn in the ESCT for, uh, what would that be, Wednesday and Thursday at first. Yeah, Wednesday and Thursday, that's number three. And then I, I've already passed out the review for down here on the bottom. This is what the, uh, the graphic will look like for the video as we start today. All right, I have three specific problems that I want to go over here, and then uh, I'll answer whatever you want me to. The first one is problem number 23. In problem number 23, we use the distance formula. Again, you don't have to memorize this. You just have to be able to, to make sure you can use it because on that page, it says that it has your formulas on it. It says x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. It gives you the distance formula and then asks you to find the distance between 3, negative 4 and negative 8, 5. Guys, pay pick. Pay particular attention here, please, to the signs. And what I talk to you about the signs because I know where the potential for mistake is. Okay, the potential for mistake is when you have the two negatives. So if I do x2 minus x1, so I can write negative 8 minus 3, or I can write 3 minus negative 8. It really doesn't matter. Uh, I just have to go in the same order. So if I wrote negative 8 minus 3 squared plus uh, 5 minus a negative 4 squared, that's the place right there when, where you can mess up if you're not careful. That's the first step in the distance formula is substitution. The second step of the distance formula is to add or subtract your answers. 5 minus a negative 4 is 9. And this next step is the one that I'm trying to make sure I bring your attention to. Guys, if you get this form, this is the same thing as a Pythagorean theorem problem. Instead of being a squared plus b squared equals c squared, it's equal to d. If I had if I had d squared and I took the square root of both sides, I would end up with this right here. And what the important thing that I'm trying to get you to see is, especially you guys that are real calculator dependent, negative 11 squared. As this calculator is that if you plug negative 11 squared into it without the parentheses, the way your calculator has to read that is the same thing we talked about yesterday. Your calculator would read this as 11 squared and then make it negative. So this would give you negative 121. Guys, in, in, in squaring with the parentheses around it, this number should always end up being a positive answer. Guys, when you square a negative, when you multiply a negative times itself, you get a positive. But if, if you use your calculator and do it like this, the reason the calculator does that is because the calculator looks at this the same way I was trying to get you to look at it yesterday. There's no such thing as a negative base to the calculator. It has a base of 11 and then a multiplier of negative 1. And so if the calculator wants to look at y equals negative 11 or something uh, negative 11 to an x and graph that exponential growth problem or whatever, it has to do the same thing here. So this, without, without the parentheses, is negative 121. But that's not what this says because it has the parentheses on it. And there, these numbers underneath the radical will always be positive. So then the distance equals, what would that be, 202? 202, square root of 202. Uh, if I tried to simplify the square root of 202, I would take 2 into it and 101. And I think 101 is... Is 101 fine? But anyway, your answer, your answer anyway is D, which says square root of 202. Uh, if, you, if you approximated that, it won't simplify. So if you approximated that, I know it would be uh, probably 
11 or 13 times 13 is one uh, 69 14 times 14 is 196 so somewhere in between 14 and 15 probably pretty close and i'm just i didn't punch a button on my calculator to see what it was but they could also write 14.1 that would be a good thing to do okay somebody had a question about this one I'm going to do 23, 24, and 25, and then I'll answer questions. That's fine. So if you said 3 minus negative 8, you should have a positive 11 negative. And you would have negative 4 minus 5. Your, your negative would be over here. You'd still end up with the same thing. Good question. All right. Uh, 24. Guys, when you work out 24, again... Work these Pythagorean theorem problems out as close to a distance from your problem as you can you can. I notice in this picture the side opposite the right angle across from the right angle is x. So then that gives me square root of 17 squared plus 5 squared equals x squared. Again, x is over here because it's the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is always the longest side. Okay, it's the longest side. So I have to sit it by itself. The square root of 17 times the square root of 17 gets rid of the radical, and that gives me 17 plus 25 equals x squared. So the square root of 42 is equal to x. Uh, I try to simplify the square root of 42. If I tried to simplify the square root of 42, 3 goes into 42 21 times, or excuse me, 2 goes into 42 21 times, 3 goes into 7 times. I know the answer is already there, but what I'm trying to get, I'm trying to ask you another question here. The prime factorization of 42 is T3 and 7. Can you simplify it? Because there are at least two of them back, so you can't cross it out. Remember, the way we said that is circle 1, cross 1 out. But you can't circle any of these factors because there's nothing to cancel out. My answer is the square root of 42. Again, just like this is one, this could both be underneath the radical sign there, and I see a 17 plus 25 is 42. It's, it's really close. The, the Pythagorean theorem and the distance formula are really related. Go ahead. I do not. Because that's what it says in the problem. Number 24 says this, one of the length of the legs is square root of 17. One of the lengths is 5. The big thing about the last problem is you know the formula for a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So when the original problem says plus 13 right here, the only h that I can plug into this problem that will give me a positive 13 is if you plug in a negative 13. So when I take negative 13 right here and plug it into this equation, that will give me x plus 13 squared like the problem says. Same issue. k in the problem says plus 17 halves. So that means minus 17 halves is plugged into it. So when you plug a negative in, you have two negatives. And what do two ma negatives make? So H and K, I see there H and K are negative 13, negative 17 halves, respectively. And R squared, it says, is 16. So R must be 4. Read the problem in number 25, and you'll see how I go from a positive to a negative here. Yes, when we were going through our chapters, we did not do this problem particularly well. A lot of us missed this one because we didn't see that you have to take the opposite of these numbers. Also, if you were asked to find the circumference, remember the circumference is the, radi the radius times 2 gives me the diameter, so that's 8 pi. Again, in our EOCT, as we've been going through this, we noticed one of the things that they ask us to do is they give us something, uh, some term of pi other than just 3.14. Remember that one time it was like pi taken out the six decimal places. Uh, finally, the area. 
if r is 16 or excuse me 4 then r squared is 16. if r squared is 16 the area would be 16 pi again remember this is area so it's square units this is a linear distance so it's just units and finally a good thing to do over and over and over again i've been trying to address this to you is to give you your questions as you work through the problem maybe give you your questions in one unit of measurement to like say r was four feet but then ask you for the inches down here in the circumference or something like that make sure you don't get tricked in that little issue that, that little uh, concept right there of changing the 